Hello everybody, welcome back to some more Fighter Subscriber, where a subscriber sends me a craft and I throw it up against my own fighters, which you can see here. Just before we get started, there's just one tiny thing to take care of. Um, on the leaderboard at the moment, the Legion Atmos Fighter and the A1 Liberator Mark VI are tied on 11 points each, and one of them could slip out of the top four today, could lose their spot in the end of season final. And so I need to, to work out which one of these should actually place higher. Um, on my list of criteria, I actually had to go down to number four, which is average time to kill, which the Liberator won by a whole minute and 42 seconds. So the Liberator is safe for today. The Legion is hanging perilously by a thread. Uh, let's go meet the craft, which we'll be hoping to do the dirty on the Legion today. So this is what Google's random number generator has chosen for us today. This is the XU26 Amaryllis Mark VI, and it certainly looks the part. It's a very different design philosophy than the, the craft we've seen so far in this series. It uses three Saturn afterburning engines, which are going to give it a hell of a lot of power, but it does carry the fuel it needs for those, which is going to make it a quite heavy craft. Um, and adding to the weight, it's gone for two of those Gawite cannons instead of the Vulcans, uh, which means it won't be able to put out the sustained fire it would do with the Vulcans, but anything it hits is going to be in trouble. You're not going to get a smattering along the fuselage, you're just going to have no fuselage. Anyway, let's get it off the runway and see how it flies. So last week I described the F-54 Kaiser as being hyper-manoeuvrable, by which I meant it was very, very, very manoeuvrable. An order of magnitude above anything else we've seen so far during this series. The Amaryllis, however, is the first craft I think we've had which fits the proper definition of super manoeuvrable. Uh, it doesn't matter which way it's flying, you can flip it about to point the other direction in a split second. Uh, it's ridiculous to fly. Uh, you're not sure what the hell is happening, but you're pretty sure it's happening in style. We saw last time that that level of manoeuvrability can sometimes be a double-edged sword, but I think if this craft can play to its strengths, then it's going to do very, very well. So. Uh, Let's get this started. So, as per usual, the Amaryllis' first fight will be against my Cyclones. Let's see what happens. And so it begins. My Cyclones were barely at altitude by the time it started. Yeah, these, uh... Got a fair bit of engine power behind them. Uh, Nothing has been slaughtered yet apart from my frame rate, but I'm sure that will fix itself in due course. All craft turn around, and it looks like all craft have got missiles away. The Amaryllises start breaking low to avoid missiles, and the Cyclones will be doing likewise. Hoping for no missile kills, um, as ever, but these Cyclones have... Yeah, they've not been that lucky <laughs> facing missiles recently. So we'll have to see how this one pans out. Something pauses. Nope. That's just that's just the way the frame rate is at the moment. It's not one of the Amaryllises. One of the Amaryllises being... Oh, it is one of the Amaryllises being hit. One of the Amaryllises is... It, oh, for goodness sake. One of the X, XU-26s falls to an early missile kill. And that will upset things. That was not what I was expecting at all. The Cyclones have not been very strong against a lot of the uh, subscriber craft, so this is a turn-up for the books. What's happening here? One of the Amaryllises turns about trying to avoid a missile, presumably. We've closed the distance. There was a bit of gunfire, but it seems to have stopped for the moment. A joust. A joust now. Can the... No doesn't get guns away. As I said, it's an interesting choice to go for those go out, go out. I've just lost the ability to speak today. Those Gao 8 cannons were an interesting choice. Doesn't seem to be that easy to get them away. As I said, once they do get locked onto you, then it's game over. But it's just getting that opportunity is going to be a little bit tricky. Back to Eridoc Kerman. Currently trying to fend off the advances of both of those Cyclones, managing to open up a fair bit of distance. With the three engines, that will always be an option. Going for a joust. And that's some debris. That is some Cyclone debris. 
That is one of the cyclones out of here. Jebediah has made good his mission to wipe one of the cyclones out of the sky and even things up. It is two on two. If this Amaryllis can just hold on a bit longer now, though. Spins out a bit. That's the problem. It just These craft are just so super manoeuvrable. <laughs> I'm not sure the cyclones know what to do when they get one of these things in their sights. Jebediah, though, lining up a shot now. We'll have to make it count. Come on, Jebediah, make the shots! There we go! There we go, and that... That is what the Galway cannons can do. It just rips that cyclone apart. With the Vulcan, you might get a smattering of fire, just get a few bullet holes across across your torso, but not with the Gowaites. If they hit you, you're dead. So it's just the one remaining Cyclone now. He does have a shot on that Amaryllis, but doesn't make it count. More gunfire reigns in. Eridoc Kerman, you've just got to pull some evasive manoeuvres until Jebediah can come and join the fight, but what is that? That is the other Amaryllis out of here. Yeah, I don't think I don't think there's any coming back from that. Eridoc Kerman is out of the fight. It's now Jebediah. Jebediah is too busy going after the debris of that cyclone, but now as it crashes into the sea, he sets his sight firmly on that last remaining cyclone. It has gone down to the wire. It is 1v1. Oh, look at that. Why aren't you taking the shot, Jebediah? What is stopping you? Weapon selected, Gow 8. There we go. There go the guns. The Cyclone is damaged. Jebediah took his sweet time about that. Anything major. Daphne Kerman has lost a control surface. Gonna make it a little bit more difficult to fly, but it's not fatal. Now Daphne Kerman can get guns onto Jebediah. Gets behind Jebediah. Jebediah still twisting and turning. Goes into a bit of a spin. Oh, takes some damage. It doesn't look fatal. Seems to have almost everything still intact. Maybe lost a few of those wing surfaces. Jebediah now, behind Daphne. Lays guns onto her. Doesn't quite make it. Into a bit of a vertical climb. Oh, almost within touching distance. There we go! The Gowite's onto the Cyclone again. The Cyclone disappears from the Vessel Switcher. And after a closely fought first contest, the Amaryllises emerge victorious. God, that was a long one. So a very interesting fight there, but one which the Amaryllis ultimately emerged as the winner. Now we move on from the Cyclones to my club tails. Let's get them into the air. So the craft approached the 8 kilometer mark and there we go, it starts. I mean, something I said a couple of times during the last fight, but I just want to reiterate, it's, it's very interesting the way the Gowaites affect the dynamic of the fights. I mean, the Amaryllis doesn't get many opportunities to to end to end the opponent to, to, to blast the opponent out of the sky but when it does get them it takes them and yeah that is just it's not something I've sort of seen on fighter subscriber before so uh, be very interesting to see how it plays out over the next this one this fight and the next one as well Eridoc Kerman maneuvers his craft. Look at how fast that thing turns. Going at a ridiculous rate and just spins around virtually without any effort. Trying to line up that club tail in his sights, but it looks like he has gunfire coming in from one of the other club tails. Oh, and one of the one of the Amaryllises has been looks like shot out of the air. Oh! It could have been a gun kill looking at the, uh, the club tail over there, or a missile kill judging by the debris cloud. I can't be sure I missed that. 
but the Amaryllises are down one very early on yet again. The Amaryllis is not managing to get guns to bear onto the uh, the club tails. The club tails are not managing it either. The Amaryllis is because they do not have the sustained fire. The club tails because this craft is just so screwy. It's it's virtually impossible to do. What has happened there? Richmond Kerman's club tail has landed. I'm not sure what happened. I'm just going to bring up the uh, collided into. Oh, taken out by a missile. Let's just carry on with that. So the... Oops, I didn't mean to do that. One of the club tails also falls to a missile. And it is two on two. Missile kills, certainly for the club tails. I'm not sure about the Amaryllis. It certainly looked, just from, as I said, the cloud of debris, it looked like a missile kill. Trying to pepper it with... Oh, and there we go. Some damage. Loses some wing surface. They're quite hardy craft, the club tails. They can continue flying in spite of some pretty serious damage. But that is going to make the craft a little bit more difficult to control. Might make it a bit more difficult for the Amaryllis to line up a shot, make it more squirrely, but it's probably not good news in the long run. Missile comes in, flies past. Jebediah Kerman. Surely trying to line up a shot now. A golden opportunity there. Fires off a missile at the other Amaryllis. Attention is distracted by the other Amaryllis. Gets hit again. Surely just one more hit will do it. Takes some more damage. Ah, oh, they're just glancing blows. I mean, for most aircraft, a glancing blow would do nothing, but these are starting to do damage. Lost a wing surface, lost some control surfaces now. Jebediah coming in to help his wingman here. Looks like he was going to go for the missiles. Instead, looks like he will instead be trying with his gawaits. Getting closer. Lining up that shot. It's a joust! Oh, and it's a collision! It's a collision! Looking at it, I think this was the club tail. <laughs> I think the club tail came off worse. Some of that is, that is some serious bugging out from some of those wing surfaces and control surfaces. It is a hand-to-hand -hand bruising for Daphne Kerman. And now I think that's Jebediah Kerman's Amaryllis. Tries to come in, take the kill, gets very close, just surely one blast from those gawaits and it will be over, but is unable to do so. <laughs> just look at the state of this craft. Ah. Uh, yeah. I don't think that'll buff out. Valentina. Valentina m missing some stuff as well. It's a war of attrition and the club tails are coming off worse from it. Valentina Kerman assessing her options. Daphne Kerman breaking low. Maybe a little too low. That's unwise in a fighter of her condition. And the club tail, unable to regain full control, crashes into the ground. Leaving it as two on one. Jebediah comes about. Lines up a missile. A fair distance away from the fight at the moment. They come about. I don't think Valentina Kerman is going to come back from this. Now both Amaryllis is laying guns into her. It's surely only going to be a matter of time. Loses more stuff. Loses half her craft is still flying, but I think we all know who the winner is here. We will um, we'll give Valentina a fair opportunity, see what she can conjure up out of this. But I don't think it's going to be much. Do you have any weapons left? You do have your Vulcans, you still have your ammunition. But now you don't have an engine. 
Okay. Again, another long and hard-fought victory. Uh, the audio has been recording for coming up 19 minutes. But once again, the Amaryllises are victorious. Let's go and see how they fare in their third and final battle. So far then, the Amaryllis has been effective, but not efficient. And now it goes up against my Panthers, which I've had to reposition because they crashed into each other the first two times I tried to do this. Um, but with the points as they are, and with the tiebreak criteria as they are, the Amaryllis needs to kill two of my Panthers, and then no matter what else, it will occupy one of the top four spots at the expense of the Legion. Fail to do so, and it will be going home empty-handed. A lot resting on this. Let's get it started. And so the competition begins. I'm just staying with the Panthers to make sure they don't crash into each other again. They didn't, so we can begin this fight proper. Mm. Some very, very, very long fights the last two times around. I'm hoping this can be a little quicker. Both sides seem to have gotten their missiles away and Jebediah Kerman is now starting to break low to avoid. I think it's the fact that the Amaryllis is manoeuvrable enough to get out of any trouble, but with those Gow 8s, as I said, it can't get down the sustained fire to, uh, to make it count when it does get into an adva advantageous position. It only needs the one good opportunity, but they're just a little too few and far between. I am starting to wonder whether or not it would have been better off with some of the uh, Vulcans. Jebediah Kerman does get off a few rounds of the Gow 8 towards one of the uh, Panthers, but uh, that's... Uh, more in hope than expectation, I suspect. Who, who is Jebediah lining up now then? That sounded like an explosion. Oh my word. That is one of the Amaryllises. Once again, an Amaryllis falls to an early kill. And it looks like... It looks like it was probably a missile kill again from the cloud, cloud of debris. There seemed to be another fighter having difficulty, but I can't see which one it is. I, actually, it might have been just the, the tail section of that same Am Amaryllis. Now I come to think of it. Gunfire going in left, right and centre. It's all the Panthers, though. Not favouring guns. We have seen this once before with Jebediah Kerman. Just got really close and then opened up with guns and a devastating effect. There we go! Oh, that's some damage. Was it enough? I'm not sure it was. I'm not sure it was. Jebediah Kerman must be bravely holding on over there. But this, that looks like some more damage on that panther. Having a little bit of difficulty controlling it. I can only see it. Must have been missiles lost. I see a missing control surface. Loses some wing. Just glancing blows at the moment, though. Oh, that is so close. But the Amaryllis is manoeuvrable enough, even in that situation, to get around, try and lay guns onto Daphne Kerman some more. Has a missile incoming. Should be able to dodge it. Has managed to put some distance between himself and the other two craft. That looks like it could be coming a bit close. Oh! And the Amaryllis disappears from the vessel switcher. Can we find that? The Amaryllis has been decapitated. Jebediah Kerman is no more. Until we reload him, obviously. But it's all down to Rowena. Who will now have to fend off three Panthers. And with the rest of them at this distance, that means... She's going to have to deal with a lot of missiles. I can't target... There we go. Oh, and that's the last Amaryllis taken out. I was here concentrating on Richmore Kerman, seeing what he was doing. And the last Amaryllis 
That's not the last one. The last Amaryllis decapitated as well. And with all three Panthers still in the air. That means the Amaryllis will be going home empty-handed, I'm afraid. It was a brave fight. As I said, effective but not efficient enough. Didn't win by large enough margins. Anyway, let's go and wrap this one up. So it's a solid showing from the XU26 Amaryllis Mark VI. Uh, winning two of its fights, but if we bring up the leaderboard, we can see that its total of six kills and three survivors over the three fights gives it nine points outside of that all-important top four. I like this craft. I do like a slightly unconventional craft, and I also like the thought of those two Gallate cannons ripping the merry hell out of their opponents. I really did want it to do well, but sadly it will be leaving us empty-handed. Thank you very much to Arctifier for this fighter. Uh, if you want me to fight some of your craft, it's probably a little bit too late to get it into this season, but um, send it to me anyway. Who knows what will happen in the future. Um, all the rules and details are in the description, but for now, thanks for watching, take care, and I'll see you next time.